Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Competitive Balance for the BBFL, now with updated 2K and Madden information. Just thought I'd go back look over real quick, nothing really changed in the regular season balance, and in the Competitive Balance for the playoffs, this is for BBFL football, We I did a little beautification, that's pretty much it. Um, point differential, nothing's changed there, I haven't added more yet. Madden, I had the final scores here from the championship games where the Cowboys won by a, a nail biter. That was a lot of fun. I updated this. This is organized now by the average point differential in games. So despite not my not winning, I'm atop this chart by winning, by having scoring an average of eight points more than my opponents, but somehow still losing the entire thing. Cowboys champions, Rams runner ups, Steelers took third. Uh, and I threw in this cheeky little LeBron meme to show our, uh, Chiefs were minus 33. They were average, outscored by an average of 16 points, three full standard deviations away from the mean, which again, standard deviation is the number of times removed from the average difference you are. So I was almost one and a half away. Cowboys were 1.2. Rams just over one full standard deviation away. Uh, Steelers got very close there. Anyway. Moving on to the Peace Day of Resistance, the 2K tournament. Look at all this beautiful data I have arranged for you guys. And there's a lot to look through here first. Over here, you'll see the uh, same situation as with the Madden tournament, where I have the game number that is according to the bracket, the team, the score, the opponent scored, the point difference. So then I use that to calculate all the way down through the playoffs to find the standard deviation for the net points. Again, this is net points is how many more points than your opponents you've scored over the course of the uh, tournament. You'll see I don't have this one organized by net points, but by the average point differential. That's just calculated the average number of points you won or lost your game by. So... Uh, Sam ended up going perfectly even at zero, which is pretty fantastic. And, uh, you'll see that Raptors there, an average point differential plus 17, or more than two standard deviations away from the mean here at 7.7. .7. But, alas, did not win. Average point differential over just totally was around 21 points, um, for that. Over here... Or the beautiful statistics I've been keeping track of for the entire game. For the entire tournament, I should say. So what this is, these are your typical basketball game line stats. Minutes played, points scored, total rebounds, steals, assists, blocks, turnovers, field goals made versus attempted, three-pointers made versus attempted, free throws made versus attempted, offensive rebounds, number of fouls, and here we come to the game score. This is the my favorite part of this. At the game score was uh, a game metric developed by uh, basketball statistician John Hollinger. And it's, it's kind of an extension of the player efficiency rating. Uh, it gives a total perspective of player statistical performance in a basketball game. So it takes into account um, all the different things they did versus the amount of time they were in the game. And it's, uh, everything's weighted. So as you'll see, there's a lot of complicated math here. Like for, what is that? That's uh, field goals made. It gets weighted by 0.4 versus um, field goals attempted, which weighted by 0.7. So it takes into the player's efficiency and just overall how good a, a game they played. So um, there's not exactly a metric at the top of this number. So it's not like set against a scale of 1 to 0, which I guess I could do. Uh, I don't really feel like doing that, though. So he gave an example of like 40 would be a fantastic game and 10 would be an average performance for a player. So here is um, the game score for every custom player's performance. These are your the custom player that James created. So see, like Stu versus Buff, very first game, 20.7 versus 21. Uh, that seemed pretty good. That uh, was 25.6 versus Nick's 12. As you scroll down through, you'll see some better performances, some worse performances. That shouldn't be bold. Sorry about that. Um... Let's see. So then the highest game score is going to be down here in bold 
in yellow, which actually happens to be me. It happens to be in our final game of a 47.3. So a triple double will really get you up there. The only other times we broke 40 was my other triple duck, the triple double in that thriller against the Raptors. And, you know, my opponent there scored 40 there. And our worst performance also happened to be today on the I'm filming this on the final day of the tournament. Uh, where uh, Sam scored a negative point two, which I didn't think negative would be possible. But when you get two points on um, what was this over three shooting and one rebound, three steals, it's not going to be great. Went two for two for the line. Well, that's nice. So then uh, here's some cheeky LeBron memes again. Here's the you know the lowest and the highest. Uh, yeah. So first place me, second place Tuck, third place Sam. Uh, let's see. Some fun facts. Highest single game score, uh, or game 19, which was this thriller that came down to the last second. The greatest game of the tournament by far. That single-handedly brought up our average game score, which is now 18.8. It brought up a full two points. Highest combined game score was also that game, 41 and 40. Most combined game score was game 11 between Ian and Nick. Which was right her. 2.5 and 8.6. That was a very rough game and a bit of a blowout on behalf of the Celtics. Here is uh, divided up by team and it's arranged uh, from highest to lowest average game score for a player. So, like, I averaged a game score of 33, uh, Raptors 25, Stu averaged 20, despite having uh, only played two games. So, that's pretty impressive. Sam came in at 19.4, on down the lane, down the line, I'm sorry, to 3.9. Here's our playoff station, nothing really crazy there. And here is a good amalgamation of the uh, custom player stats throughout the tournament. And the, so in the lighter green, that's just the total number that you accrued of that statistic, so... Uh, let's see, where's James? James played 133 minutes, scored 54 points, totaled 18 total rebounds, 15 total steals, 2 assists, 5 blocks, 3 turnovers. Shot this well. And you got these. The darker green is going to be the tournament average. So I took however many points, or how many of the statistic that you scored, and divided it by the number of games you appeared in. So, uh... This will for the dark green will be your percentage throughout the entire um, tournament, and then in the golden golden bold, that's going to be if you in that statistic you had the highest, and if it was red and bold, it's going to be the worst. So, Sam played the most minutes. Do play the fewest minutes. That kind of makes sense. I had the most average points, lowest points. Um, over here, I put some not applicables because Stu and Seth never attempted a three-pointer, so it'd be unfair to list them as zero. I made I attempted one and missed it, and these other ones in red also missed all of theirs. Lowest free throw shooting is 78%, which uh, kind of grinds my gears because I'm a real free throw guy, but uh, what are you going to do? Down here, uh, Ian never made it to the line, so... Uh, that's what happens when so he wait didn't he has a free throw percentage, and all of you lovely people never missed a free throw. Now I didn't go in and calculate how many he did, but um, Ian shot twenty eight from the field. I shot seventy six. Just gonna shout that out. Let's see. Uh, Michael and Nick both averaged a third of an offensive rebound per game. Sam averaged three fouls per game. Uh, Michael only averaged one. I had the highest average game score, and Ian had the lowest. This is roughly organized here, The this chart. The players organized in order of average game score. So that's going to be the competitive balance of the BBFL version 5.0. I hope you enjoyed this, and I loved gobbling up all these ridiculous statistics. Uh, thanks again to the Kamish for putting on this simulation tournament. It's been real rough trying to live in this sportsless world, so 
I'm voting for the beer pong tournament next. I don't know if you guys are up for it, but I am totally in. So uh, for all of us here at BBFL Broadcasting and the Pokemon franchise, thank you and good night.